Hey, what's up team? That Logic Pro guy here and today we're going to talk about stock presets and user presets. Now, I've done another video on the channel, so I'll go ahead and link that in the description. If you want to get into the weeds and really start to understand the intricacies, go ahead and check out that video. But for now, let's just do a quick overview. There's two folder paths that are the most important here. If we look at your computer, library, application support, Logic, there is a folder in there called plugin settings, and this is where you're going to find your presets. So when you let's say pull up a chorus or any other plugin in here and it contains presets made from the manufacturer which is Apple Logic Pro right this is where you're gonna find those .pst files so let's go over on the right hand side and let's look at the audio music apps folder its file path is computer users Eddie Gray music audio music apps so obviously for you, it's going to say your name here. So inside of the audio music apps folder, this is where we find our user preset. So if I go into the same plugin settings folder, obviously it's in a different location. Now we find what's called the .pst, but for the Logic Pro user preset. So let's say I went back to that chorus and I decided to create one of my own presets i don't know maybe i set the intensity up to like 56 change the rate bring this up to an aggressive 86 and i saved this this is going to save in that same file path so you can see the file path is name users your name music audio music apps and so that is the same location as here so that's what you basically have to understand with Logic Pro, they use .pst files to create presets. Now, I wish it were that easy because, of course, there's always something else when it comes to Logic Pro. This is a very deep, sophisticated program. It has a history of 30 years, and so obviously it's going to come with inherited behavior and inherited stuff. And so we also have to consider third-party presets. So let's say you download a new plugin. And so let me go ahead and open up the grader. Now what's interesting about this plugin is we do in fact have the third party plugin user presets. And so if I go to load here, we're going to find that location somewhere different entirely. It is under the user pathway, library, audio, presets. And this is where we create what's called a dot a U preset. So let's go ahead and find that really quickly. So under users, Eddie Gray, library, audio, presets. Let me go ahead and hit the right arrow key. Let's extend this out. And so here are different plugins that I've downloaded. I love mixed in key. I love PSP AudioWare. And here is a plugin that I actually created some presets for. And there is the dot AU preset file. Now when I say I created presets for this, I was commissioned by this company to literally create presets for the company. But this is not a Logic Pro user preset in the traditional way that I've been talking about. I am saying that when you buy the plugin, it comes with presets by certain artists or sound designers. And so the location of that is somewhere different. And that's typically going to be a different file format altogether. So if there's a third-party plugin company that you really like, you buy their software, not only will you be able to use the presets that come with that specific piece of software, but you'll be able to create your own presets as well. And so you could see that what they have provided is what's called dot the greater preset factory presets are all here and these are the presets that I was telling you about. Again, if this kind of stuff interests you, go ahead and check out the link in the description. It's covered in this video. Let's carry on. I will go ahead and link a description for the sampler and quick sampler video I made where I completely break down how everything works within that hierarchy. But for now, I just want to look at the presets. So if I go over here to the left hand side, you can see that I have the sampler instruments and these are .exs files, again inherited 
from a former instrument that was called the EXS24. Now, what's interesting about that is we're actually using the EXS factory samples. I don't know why they didn't put these two together. I thought it would be a cleaner job, but okay. Um, now, if I shift over to the right-hand side, this is where we find Logic Pro user presets, the ones that you create, and you have a chance to save them with audio data. And so if you choose to do that, the folder below is going to contain the Logic Pro user presets with audio data. Now, obviously, it's not going to show up this way. I have typed everything out in this manner for clarity's sake, but it's going to be named whatever it is that you deem fit. But if I go here, you can see that I also saved a .exs file with no audio data. And so now the .exs file is going to be looking at the samples, whether you have them internally in your hard drive or whether you have them externally. So watch that video. It'll give you clarity as it pertains to sampler. Now, one thing that really throws me off is if I go into plugin settings and I hover down to quick sampler, you can see that we can create our own Logic Pro user presets or .pst files. But if I go to sampler, there's nothing that you can do here. I'm not sure how this works. What I do know is that when I load a file, it points back to that very same place. If you know the purpose of this folder, I'm sure it's inherited behavior from the past, but please hit me up in the comments. So we've taken care of .pst, we've taken care of .au preset. Let's look at Alchemy. On the left-hand side, we have all of the samples contained within Alchemy, so essentially everything that it's using. But if I shift over to the right-hand side, this is where all the presets are. Again, I think this is also kind of confusing. And if we look below within the plugin settings under Alchemy, this is where we find all of the various presets. For Alchemy, these are called .acp files. And if I go to the user pathway here and I go into plugin settings, you can create your own .acp files. Now I wanna cover two more things. There's a great function that a lot of Logic users don't really get around to, and I just, I think it's paramount. If I click on the EQ thumbnail here and I open up an EQ, let me go ahead and resize this to 125. Now you'll notice that the way that my EQ opened, there's a low cut filter and a high cut filter. Now that's not the default behavior. The only reason this is occurring is because I set it up that way. So if I open up another EQ, you can see that that behavior is standard. And so I wanna to talk to you about what's called saving as default. If you know that your go-to is to cut at 50 hertz, then you should always open up this EQ or that compressor with whatever setting you want as a default. What Logic is going to do is save what's called a dot P list within that structure so that every single time you open up your plugin of choice, it opens up in the direct and specific way that you would like it to. All right, the last thing that I would like to look at We've been talking about this idea of stock logic material on the left-hand side and then user material on the right-hand side. And if we go to channel strip settings, you can see that this is where logic contains all of the .cst files that are important to the program. But let me head over to the user pathway. And there's, there's one peculiar item, which is a bit of a throwaway, but I thought I would bring it up. It's called a performance. And what I find interesting about this is that it uses channel strip settings. And I can, in fact, confirm that this is definitely archaic behavior from the past. So if I go into channel strip settings here, you can see that you can save something as a performance. So in the case of this software instrument up here, I did this in advance. And so if I click up here within the channel strip, you can see I have some performances prepared. And so to sum up this idea really quickly, this would probably be good for a live performance. Maybe you want to play your verses very clean and then you want to rock hard on your courses. This is where this would come into play. So if it has any application today, I guess a useful way of using it would be to switch among different software instruments or different channel strip settings. So let's say I'm writing some dramatic music and so 
In the beginning, maybe I use this specific instrument. And then when I get to the end of the theme, I want to write in a different instrument. Then you see how I switch from performance number one, which is alchemy, to performance number three, which is retro synth. I feel like it's a bit redundant because we're just really doing the same function that a channel strip setting would be doing. So anyway, if that's useful, I hope it helps you. All right, team, thank you so much for watching this video on where are my logic profiles. Please share the information. We are well on our way to monetizing this channel. So thank you so much for helping me get to the next level. In the next video, we will cover the biggest files in Logic Pro. So if you need to clean up your computer, that's definitely the video to watch. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.